This is the tenor clef that we're looking at. As you see, there's two extra lines below it, one and two, throwing up them deuces. And so if I were to draw, the, the, these would be strings, okay? These would be strings. And if you had a five-string cello, this would be your E string. This would then be your A string. This would then be your D string. And then this right here would be your G string. So if you're wondering, why do we use tenor clef is, well, we're going to use it when we are playing notes on what string? Well, typically, we do not play notes in this area on the tenor clef, this bottom half of the stave. Again, I drew this part, I drew this extra part right here to really show you the area of the bass clef. And to really drive this home, I'm even going to draw in the bass clef, which would be right here. I'm going to draw in a doot. Draw a little bass clef right here. There's a bass clef right there. So you really drive this home, okay? And actually, it's even going to be smaller than that because, uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Boop. Remember, this is F. That's the F. And it's cleta fa. Okay, cleta fa. Boop. Fa. Okay. Bass clef is more cleta fa. And it's more clear if we do this cleta fa. And then we have here in the tenor clef, this is the cle du sol do or cle dut. And since it's more precise to say dut, don't ask me why. They say dut. So it's cle du do or cle dut. And that's where the C is. That's where the C is right there. Okay? Just to make that super clear. Now, if you're seeing something particular about this, this collection of, of um, notes, we're going to look for, are the notes happening, are they existing sort of anywhere here on this bottom half down here? Are they, are they doing anything down there? And the answer is actually they really don't do anything in this bottom half. I'm talking about this entire bottom half right here. So if I am scratching out all of this area right here, that means we are not going to be using the G and the D string in tenor clef. Clue number one. Clue number two is that it's still going to be aligned on the, on, the, on, the, on the lines, which is super easy. So the middle line is your A string. So that's really easy. There's no movement of them. There's not going to be like in the clet sol and the treble clef, you have to think, oh, it's not on the a line anymore. It's on the space. So it's really easy. Just move things down a little bit. So if I were to take this line, yeah, erase this now, and I were to shift it downward. So these are that. Remember, you're, you're just basically taking this and going one, two, shifting down and now we are there. So since we're not playing here in the, the D string and the G string area, this whole area here, that means that we're not, we're going to be primarily playing on the A string, up and down the A string. So if you're going to look along a sheet of music, you won't find music below the middle line. Sometimes you will find a slight exception in this case. These are notes on the D string. These are notes on the col de ré. Okay, very important. But otherwise, all of these notes, and I'm going to put this in a nice light blue. Here we go. All of these notes are going to exist on the A string and higher in the tenor clef. So it's basically using half of the stave and higher. And you see that's fourth position on the A string. And so everything's going to, again, exist on this bottom line, this middle line and up in the tenor clef. So clue number three, it's the middle line and up tenor clef. So it's kind of like a half clef for us because we don't really use the bottom half of the stave. That's one thing you don't have to worry about. You just read up to the top. So everything is there. And then the last clue is that we're looking right here, for instance, at this part Going back to the very beginning here, these notes. And these notes right here, again, we're going to write this is an E. If you don't know, that's your A, and that is your D. Again, we're not using the D, so we're going to just completely forget about that. So now you just start to look, and if you know anything about the cello, fourth position, first finger 
on your cello is what note? Haha, -ha, cello magically appeared. And so it's, it is the E, the fourth position, first finger, which you see right here. This note right here is an E. And if you were a violin player, you, you would have another string. If you had a five string cello, you would have another string, which would be here. Now we know on cello, the first finger in the fourth position is the exact same tone as the next string over. So we know fourth position renders the notes here in the first position. So fourth position here renders if we had another string. And since the other string is literally another line in tenor clef, then we can easily decide that that fourth position will be that line above our fourth position and higher, or our new string. So tip number one is the fact that we don't use the D and the G string. Forget about these. So think about it as a half clef. Tip number two is we're going to stay on the A and continue up along the neck, just this area right here. And tip number three is the fact that I don't remember what tip number three was, but <laughs> oh yeah, tip number three is you treat that top line like another string. And I probably even mix them up, okay? You know how many years I've been trying to explain this and how many times I do explain it? And I think it's quite simple, but at the end of the day, if you think of tenor clef as a half a clef that exists for the context of making it easy to read the notes on the A string, then why do we use tenor clef? It's really quite simple. I'm going to show you the same exact score, but instead, this are the exact same notes, the exact same passage of three measures. Look how many lines there are, all those ledger lines. This is bass clef. Look how many ledger lines. As you continue to read, look at this right here. Look at these three measures. That's a lot of lines. Yes, it's on the A string. As you see, it's high, but then it becomes confusing. Would it be easier to bring those closer into the stave and read them? And the answer is absolutely yes, because this is what we do right here. Now, here we have the exact same three measures that you just saw. Closer to the stave, less ledger lines. Same thing here. Close within the stave, less to almost no ledger lines it is easier to visually read. It's a half a clef, the tenor clef. It's a half a clef that provides you the notes along the A string primarily, rarely on the D string. So it's, single, it's like a single string clef. It's reserved for the A. And this song, all the notes are on the A string. All of them, up to that point. And then you play a single passage of notes here on the D string, and this is where sometimes people do get confused, these notes here are on the D, but everything else are on the A. To help you understand what's going on and why we use a tenor clef, I'm going to play what you see here, and if you get the Y, then you're going to now see, oh yeah, this is going to be that uh-huh, light bulb moment, bing bong, bing bong, watch. Bass clef, starting at the beginning, one, two. Now whenever you have a new clef in music, it shows up in the middle of a measure. And at this point, in the next score, you're going to see tenor clef, a little tenor clef show up. And it looks a little bit like this right here. Same measure, do you see it right there? So it doesn't have those extra ledger lines below. So if you don't see a little clef, that means you're going to play in the bass clef. Three ledger lines. Not a problem. It's a lot of ledger lines, though. Can we make it slightly easier to read? Bring those down? Absolutely. Now there's a little tenor clef showing us to play, shifting up here, same notes, but now just easier to read. The 
these notes again look like they're on the G, but they're actually on the D. It's rare when the tenor clef drops below in the second half of the stave. It's just temporary. Now, you try it. I want you to read bass clef from this measure here to this measure here. Just that alone. And then we're going to shift over to the tenor clef. So, one, two, you can pick up in the fifth measure. One, two, three, mm, go. Okay, if you are successful in that, then let's go and play those exact same notes now in the tenor clef. We're going to, you're going to start here and end here. I'm going to start at the beginning. One, two, three, four, one, three, one, three, go. And sometimes you will see a different fingering here. That means the suggestions on both sides. Continue on. Measure nine. Continue measure nine. So let us continue to the next section. We're starting here in the measure 13. So measure 13 to measure 20. Measure 13 to measure 20. So one, two, three, four, one. One, one. 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 Now you see at the end of measure 19, there is a small bass clef. And if you're familiar, unfamiliar with my usage of this type of bass clef, it's a cletifa. It's an ancient form. It looks cool. I use it because the other one's boring and overrated. I like that one. Anyway, so yes, whenever you see a clef change, and sometimes you'll have a tiny one showing up to tell you, oh, it's going to change because it's a quick arpeggio after that. Okay? <laughs> 